Nostalgia critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. When I first reviewed Alien vs. Predator, I said the whole film was kinda like a battle between your jock side and your intellectual side. Well, thankfully, with the sequel, you don't have to worry about that because everybody loses. Whatever your thoughts on the first Alien vs. Predator, everyone agrees its sequel sucks major dick shaped alien head. Even with an actual R rating this time, people mostly came out of the theater still saying the same thing. I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit. It missed with fans, it missed with critics, so what is it about this film that pissed everyone off so much? Well, getting directors who worked on Nickelback video sure wasn't a great start. Run! Get to the chopper! And it also led to a quick end, with the film costing close to $130 million to make and turning in only $40 million in ticket sales. So let's see how it became game over, man, for this franchise. This is Alien vs. Predator Requiem. I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a part of me that loved mixing both the Alien and Predator style credits. And even the intro isn't bad when the Alien from the last film bursts out of the same Predator, causing their ship to crash land back on Earth. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting clever girls. <laughs> it looks like a couple of facehuggers attack both the hunter and the kid. Again, not a bad start, I dare even say it's kinda badass. But the film gets pretty standard and lame quick when it cuts to a nearby suburban town. Gotta wear the hat. The only reason you make us wear a hat is because some manager made you wear a hat when you were drunk. Make the run, or you're fired. And wear the hat. Nah, it already feels like an Alien vs. Predator movie. Pizza hat, classic. It looks like our main character, Ricky, didn't want to make the delivery because a girl he likes named Jessie happens to live there and happens to have a jackass boyfriend with some jackass other friends. It's a cute outfit, Ricky. Yeah, it's in Halloween in October. <laughs> yeah, people with jobs make me sick. That's why I'm gonna flex my pecs until they explode. What the hell am I doing? She pays for the pizza, but it looks like seizure pecs isn't done yet. <laughs> Find them in 30 minutes or less, asshole. Is it really worth going that insane for this insult? Because now I know who ordered the sausage lovers. Seems kind of like an overreaction. Maybe these guys are like, You leave our friend's sexual discoveries to his own pacing! What are you guys talking about? Come on, man, we know you're so deep in the closet you're naming the coat hangers. Hey, I'm not gay! Shh! Let's go watch some cooking show. Okay, that sounds great. I love Jesse just standing there like, Let's go. Well, he said let's go. I'm powerless to thwart his logic. Alien versus Predator, folks, we're sorry. The sheriff shows up to check out the crashed ship where it has, even by this film's standards, a pretty shitty fake out. Well, yeah, what else do you think we would see there? The alien driving a car? Do you have any gray poupon that is literally gray? Kindly smear it on yourself and await my instructions. We next cut to a soldier returning home from the army as her kid is so happy she's home after so long she immediately asks what she got for her. Are these for me? You don't like them? Are you kidding me? These are so cool. Oh, and I guess I miss you after being away for so long. Can this play Arena of Valor? Meanwhile, one of the Predators lands on Earth to locate the ship and very slowly figures out what happened. You'd think this be boring and uninteresting, but you're wrong. It's really boring and uninteresting. Okay, audience, give me a bit. I didn't see the same part of the movie you did, so I gotta figure this out. Let's see, it's called Alien vs. Predator, so that would mean the face huggers are having a picnic upstairs! No, no, why would it be rated R then? 
Unless they're using some very harsh language. Please cut away from me. Here we go, I'm in a house. Well, things are gonna get interesting now. Oh, never mind, it wasn't me. It was just a bad fake out. In fact, why are you still hearing me then? I want dad to read it. Okay. This kid is so weird in her affection to her mother that her father has to come in and remind her what her motivation is. You remember all those times you told me how much you miss mommy? It's okay to tell mommy that. Unless she gets angry at daddy for playing too much Xbox, in which case you can be a little cold. Ricky's brother, Dallas Howard. I too will not be able to separate that. Returns home from prison and helps Ricky get his keys in the sewer. Yeah, you're totally gonna find it down there, guys. You know when keys get lost, they sniff you out and find their way home? No, I'm just kidding, they're keys. What the hell are you guys doing? Is that a couch? Yeah, it's nicer than ours. Mm. Wrong. The correct answer is, what the hell is a couch doing in the sewer? Is this Hobo Snick? You sure this is the right way? Oh no, it's... something. This movie is too goddamn dark. Meanwhile, a search party is looking for the hunter and his son while the predator hunts too. One of the most annoying parts of the movie is every time it cuts to his vision, it makes this obnoxious ass sound effect. I don't remember it doing that all the time in the other movies. It sounds like the testicles on Simon Belmont's whip dropped and he won't stop showing it off. Are you sure this is necessary? Meanwhile, Ricky's brother continues to look for work. How's the job hunt going? Breaking and entering a special skill. You got any suggestions? There's an opening for Ant-Man down the street. I want you to break into a place and steal some stuff. The sheriff comes across one of his men the Predator killed, and if Dallas is still looking for work, he could try Undertaker. I mean, if they took in Steve Bannon here, they'll take anyone. What are you gonna do? I'll let you know when I figure it out. Well, I'll continue being a gene splice of Brian Cox and Philip Seymour Hoffman. Not that the Alien vs. Predator Requiem audience knows who they are. Jessie approaches Rick and tells him that she fired her boyfriend. No, really, that's the terminology she uses. And it's ex-boyfriend, actually. He's been fired. What can I say? He didn't raise profits in my southern regions. So the Predator finally finds the alien, and seeing how this is set in suburbia, we're really gonna change things up by having them fight in a dark, wet, enclosed area. Whoa, slow down. There's only so much groundbreaking we can do in this movie. In that I want you to break the ground so you can go to the surface and actually be a better movie. <laughs> That's eventually what they end up doing, and maybe the more I think about it, I don't want to see them in the everyday world. It can kind of look goofy, like when the waitress sees her boss being attacked. <laughs> Something about the alien coming through swinging doors is hilarious. Any one of you varmints care to slap leather with me? While she gets attacked by the predator-alien hybrid, we have yet another confusing fake out. you know how fake outs work. You can't just put creepy music over everything and then suddenly expect that to start off scary. The scene doesn't even go anywhere. It was literally just cut in there to be a quote, gotcha moment. Even though there was nothing to gotcha with. Just random creepy music. If that was the case, I could just put creepy music over what I'm saying and it'd suddenly be scary. I mean, think about it. You gotta... And when she came to, she was a poodle. But you all know that. Hi guys, I'm Chaplin, Doug's new kitty. Have you heard about this mouse on a string? God, I love this mouse on a string. Until I get bored by it. I'm a little bored by the mouse on the string. Now I'm back to it. Mouses on strings are great. And did you know that you can see Doug and the rest of the gang at Grand Rapids Comic Con? It's November 9th to the 11th. It'll be my owner, Doug. What a great guy. His brother, Rob. What a great guy. Malcolm Ray, great guy. Tamara Chambers, great guy. And Jim J-Rod, coincidentally, also a great guy. There's a lot of other great guests there, so we hope you check them out. Me, I'm gonna go ruin Doug's couch. What a great couch. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. Isn't that great? I'm just gonna sniff this for a while. I love sniffing this for a while. Oh, that one fell too, but I'm just gonna keep sniffing this one for a while. I'm a really weird cat. So go to this site to figure out how you can get tickets to Grand Rapids Comic Con in Michigan and smell scratching posts on couches. You don't know what you're missing. This is great! So the show 
tells Dallas not only about the dead cop he found peel like a banana, but how he also can't find the hunter and the kid. Well, maybe if you follow that loud crashing spaceship that a ton of people must have noticed, including the hunter and kid. And was NASA goddamn asleep when this thing crashed? How did nobody notice this thing? You want some help? I don't know, Dallas. Come on. I'll ride in the back. Boy, he sure is trusting to a guy who is an ex-con. I dare even say, him being an ex-con has absolutely no impact on the story whatsoever. So it kind of makes everything even more puzzling. Come on. I'll ride in the back. Okay, but try and steal my keys again and ah, you know I'll do nothing. Our monsters go from the dark and enclosed sewer to the dark and enclosed industrial site. And as long as they're smoking pipes they can jerk off to, they're good. As I'm beginning to think these predators couldn't find an alien if it was right under them. Thwarted by my lazy neck's refusal to look down! Meanwhile, Ricky goes swimming with his new date. You tell me, are you looking at me or the clock? Is she asking him or the audience? Because we're looking at the clock. But get this, the boyfriend she fired locates them at the pool and brings apparently the only two friends this kid has. No, Ricky, stop it! Damn it, I knew I shouldn't have posted. I was going here on Facebook. And I also should have unfriended my ex. Dumb, dumb. The predator knocks off the power, though, as one of the aliens enters the pool. Oh my god, get out of the water! Get out! Get out. Don't do that, he'll multiply! Oh, I mean, uh, he'll come back and draw his revenge! I mean, uh, what generic series am I in again? Shit. Shit. Come on. Tell everyone I got to third base with your girlfriend! Back at the soldier's house, we'll get maybe the only funny scene when the kid says she saw a monster outside. It was real. See? No monster. That's just funny. Surprise! Daughter therapy sessions for decades! Meanwhile, back at the pool, Ricky has to report on what happened. Mark, he's dead, and I think they got Nick too. What was it? It was an alien... a predator... It was Requiem. Don't worry, me and this ex-con will set things right. Why is he with him? Oh yeah, so we can tell the officer not to text and drive while almost running somebody over. Were you from the police and sleepwalkers? I suggest we not report this to any cops, refuse to call for backup, tackle these monsters with a bunch of teenagers, and give weapons to an ex-con! Yes, that's really what happened. I don't think the police station is such a hot idea. We need guns. Where are the guns? Follow me. Can't believe I'm letting you do this. This plan is stupid! That was the only sensible part. To their credit, even the National Guard seems too dumb to take these things out. Hi, guy! <laughs> What a happy coincidence the soldier and her daughter just happened to hide out in the exact same location. That saves time when the alien and predator have to fight in their store. Well, we're waiting. Yeah, stop looking at each other and actually do something! On screen! That's really it? We had a whole storm of crazy shit they could've utilized and all we got was a window crashing? Who directed this, Gareth Edwards? While that's happening, the aliens sneak into a hospital, or as they call it, an all-you-can-eat buffet. Oh, yeah, I'm sure Alien vs. Predator 2 is gonna show mass baby slaughter. This is the one with the most street cred to do that. Knowing how bad this series gets, they're probably just setting up a warped version of this. Eh, to their sick, disturbed credit, though, the alien-predator hybrid seems to find a pregnant woman and sci-fi's the shit out of her. Maybe it isn't too far from this. They call the National Guard, who tell them there's an airlift in the middle of town. Thank God the soldier just happened to be trained in driving tanks. You're welcome. But she smells a big, dirty rat. I think the colonel was lying. That's crazy. The government doesn't lie to people. That line is so sad, the movie didn't even need to give a punchline for it. They figure the only other spot that would have an airlift would be at that yummy hospital, so the crew splits. Half going to the town, and the other half going to the hospital. Take care. I hope we're both wrong. That way we can both die. What a dumb line! Whatever happens inside, the only person that can't get hurt is Kelly. Alright, we all protect Kelly. What is this, the Titanic? Screw the women and children first shit, man! What is this, the Titanic? Screw the women and children first shit, man! That didn't sound like that, did I? Look, asshole, unless you can fly the helicopter, shut the fuck up! Well, maybe if you opened with that. 
And how do you know she can do that anyway? Do they really train the same people to operate tanks and helicopters? Wouldn't it make more sense to have a specialist for both? Wonder if I could play the accordion too. They go inside, and I have to admit, for an alien and predator film, I'm kind of impressed how high the body count of innocent people in this hospital is. Good God, why don't you just kill off the pretty girlfriend while you're at it? That just came out of nowhere! Those babies are dead, aren't they? You are that goddamn crazy! In the last 10 minutes, why did we wait an hour 20 for this? Even then, most of the climax is just watching them run away to get to the helicopter. Oh god, don't say it. Get to the chopper! You're dead to me, movie! As dead as those babies you probably killed. Don't people bring their dates to this? So it's finally Predator versus Predator Alien. You know, in the background. Even when you do see it, it's so shaky and unappealingly green, it's like it was directed by David Fincher in a blender. I'll just make out already, you know that's what we're all here to see. But at least the airlift has arrived for those people that went into town, ha ha! The helicopter, of course, outruns the explosion as they come across other military hiding in the forest. Put down your weapons. And your adorable toy gun, too. You bastards killed the entire town. I'm just following orders. Commentary, I guess. Kinda came out of nowhere, but oh well, the music says to be happy, so we can rap on a funny line. Oh, I told you not to crash. <laughs> oh, that's so many people the government murdered, but I told you not to crash! But it's not over yet. Oh, this bait for another sequel won't lead to shit. I'm just saying there's another minute left. The world isn't ready for this technology. But this isn't for our world, is it, Miss Yutani? I have no idea who that is! This movie's so bad, I'd much rather see a film based on the director's credit. The Brother Strauss sounds like an amazing title for anything. Why couldn't we get a Brother Strauss movie not directed by the Brother Strauss? Well, I'll tell you why we never got one, because they can't even get a basic concept like this down. There is no hope. Alien vs. Predator. It should be so easy, and yet for some reason, it's so hard. Requiem, in all fairness, is not a god-awful movie. It's just boring, uninspired, and not particularly good to look at. I've seen much worse sequels, and I do have to give credit to the few times it went really extreme. But if you don't care about the people or the situations in those extreme scenes, they lose their magnitude. It just feels like an uneventful movie, forgettable and meaningless. I've seen a lot worse, but I've definitely seen a lot better. Meaning this will probably be forgotten as quickly as what's his name, who's her face, and something versus something or other. This is an easy one to skip. So come on, Hollywood, give me a new kind of monster. Something different, something totally unique that I have never seen before, and I can't even believe they made a movie on. They couldn't have made a movie out of that. Everybody, so I got a kitty. His name is Chaplin, and uh, he's super nice and social and cute. And he's a little tired this morning, so he's not doing much. But uh, I guess that's part of being a cat. Uh, what I was getting to is that I, uh, because we were getting used to having a cat, I've never had a pet before. Uh, we didn't get a chance to do a charity shout out this week, so I'm just gonna do where we got him, which is one we've done before. It's called Save a Pet. It's a wonderful place. Uh, we did a What You Can Do video on it as well, so if you want to volunteer there, you definitely can. Uh, he is a super sweet cat, and there's a lot of other sweet cats and dogs there. If you want to adopt one, if you want to uh, give money, donate, or even just... Oh, there he goes. Now you're moving a bit. So if you want to donate uh, time or money or anything you have, they accept a lot of things over there, uh, definitely check it out. It's a wonderful site, a wonderful place with wonderful animals so definitely go and click on the link